All right, guys, this is my recap of the Nunes versus Spencer fight, UFC 250, really uh, really fun card. I knew it had some good matchups. You know, people are sleeping on this card. I think it was a fun one, but um, yeah, I got, you know, <laughs> it's a tough one, you know, for picks, for betting in general, but um, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, Herbert Burns, Evan Denham versus Herbert Burns, man. I, I picked Burns to win, and I was happy about that. Uh, really good stuff. Look at that. Submission, man. And th three minutes and 40 seconds in. Round one. Submission. And Evan Dunham looked really good. Look at that. If you look at the stats here, significant strikes. Evan Dunham did have six, three, and then uh, Herbert Burns had five, right? You know, take down one of their submission attempt one, passes one, right? You can see all their um, control time. Herbert Burns, man, looked really good. I just picked him to win. I thought Evan Dunham would get hurt to the body. And, um, you know, Burns looking good, training with his brother. And uh, I thought, yeah, the strike, you know, I thought the strike would be. I have to get it, but that's really cool. I didn't, uh, I didn't think he'd get that submission in round one. I, I, well, I, I didn't, didn't see it happening, but yeah, awesome for him. Good stuff, man. Uh, really happy about that. Uh, this next one, though, yeah, Alonzo Menafield versus Devin Clark. I got this one wrong. I did pick Menafield, but I, like I said, I knew it was a risky one, I thought, because, oh, man, I just, I knew Alonzo Menafield. I knew he could gas, but, like, man, got those big muscles. I thought he could overpower him, but look at that. Uh, unanimous decision round three. I mean, it was. I think he was just starting to slow down in the in the beginning. I remember he did land a really hard shot to Devin Clark. Devin Clark's eye was swollen shut. And I thought, oh, he get it. But look at that. Look at the strikes. Total strikes. Devin Clark has one hundred fifty compared to fifty four strikes for Alonzo Menafield. Like Menafield just couldn't have the output. You could see him kind of slow down. He just wasn't really getting the good output. Um, you know, significant strikes. It was like yeah, seventy nine. For Devin Clark versus 39 for Alonzo Menfield. So you just see the output. I mean, Devin Clark is, is really tough to die. I just thought, you know, he gets when he gets hurt, he doesn't like it. You could see in the beginning, he's like, I thought, oh my God, it's going to happen. We're going to see a first, you know, a first round TKO over here, you know. But uh, Devin Clark kind of weathered the storm. He didn't like it. He turtled up a lot. And um, I think Alonzo Menfield was handling a nice uppercut. But I think he was just going for broke. Like when he saw that the, the big shots wasn't enough to get him out of the way. <clears throat> You know, then Clark was tough. I think, you know, even though he doesn't like to get hit, he weathered the storm and he was just a fresher fighter and was able to land, uh, you know, more strikes. And, uh, you know, Alonzo Benefield tried to get him in the cage, okay, tried to push him there, you know, grind him out. But he just never really fully recovered. I think it's just, yeah, he needs that cardio. I mean, he's a great athlete. You can see it. He's explosive. He's powerful. But that alone is not enough to, to win every fight, you know. But, uh, yeah, good good, good for Devin Clark. But, yeah, it was a, it was a tough one. Yeah, it's tough to pick. But, uh, yeah, good for Devin Clark, man. Um, going up next, oh, this is a good one. Uh, my pick, I was leaning towards Alex Perez. I should have bet it, though, but nah. I guess uh, Alex Perez, look at that, round one, 54 seconds in, KO, TKO, my goodness. I thought, yeah, the power was good. I thought, you know, Formiga, I like Formiga. I think he's still well-rounded. Some people are saying that maybe you should just, um, is, this enough? is it basically call it a career for Formiga? Should he just call it quits? I don't really think so. I think he's still... Okay, I just like that he's so well rounded. He's good. His striking looks pretty good, you know, as well. Like he's good output, you know, he's slick. He's no slouch, man. And his ground game, of course, really good. But Alex Perez, man, yeah, the younger guy, you know, a lot of power in the hands. Look at that. Yep, total strikes twenty nine versus for Alex Perez versus eighteen for for Miga. Just oh man, good stuff. Look at that. It just yeah, I just uh yeah, I I, uh, I picked Perez, but I, I just didn't know because you never you can't really count a guy like Formiga completely out. I mean, we'll see in the next fight or two how he looks if he can bounce back. But um, yeah, really, still a really good guy in the division. But yeah, hats off to Alex Perez. I did think he'd win it. Going on to the next one, let's talk about the prelims. So over here, yeah, fun fights, man. Look at this one. So this one, ooh, this is one I got wrong. Uh, but I'm not even surprised by it. Like Charles Bird, man. Speaking of which, like the, the cardio. Look at that round two. Three minutes, 50 seconds in, K.O.T. K.O. Mackie Patola, man, freaking coconut bombs. I knew he was like, you know, he had good striking. He's young. He's tough Hawaiian. So I was like, I was thinking about him, but he was, he was underdog too. I should have gone for it. But no, I was thinking my pick was Charles Bird. I just thought, you know, even though he's older, I thought like he could maybe manhandle him. He's, he's, I mean, he's so physical as well. He's a very strong guy. But at the weigh-ins though, one thing I did consider me is like when I looked at the weigh-ins, they didn't, they didn't look that different in size, you know, like they both look like pretty big guys. Like I think... So that was one thing I was like, oh, I thought Charles Bird would look a little bit bigger on not only Wayne's, but also the, the face-offs, you know, like when they actually faced each other. I was like, I looked down, sized them up. I was like, man, these guys are looking like pretty much the same size. Damn it. But look at that. Total strikes for Mackie Patola, 33 versus only 16 for Charles Bird. You know, takedowns. Mackie Patola got three takedowns versus Charles Bird, only one. You know, I mean, good stuff. The passes as well. Yeah, Mackie Patola looked really good, man. He just looked, I mean, when he got him off the cage, he was able to reverse it. Just looked even better than I thought. I thought he kind of like, 
just you know plot his lead leg down and just trying to swing shots i mean i know he's good has good boxing but yeah it really impressed me here i think it was really great so hats off to him and yeah that's a that's a pick i, I got wrong but i'm not even mad about it like i think yeah just really fun uh really fun fights man just good uh, good on uh patolo i have to kind of have to you know eat my humble pie i have to really think rethink his matches uh coming up next man yeah cody Stamen versus uh brian kelleher i did pick cody Stamen. i thought you know i thought he'd get it and uh yeah really good for him emotional stuff you know uh mourning the brother the loss of his brother he finally let it out after three rounds of, of dominating he, he just let out you know the emotions and uh yeah really great to see him get the win i thought i know i thought he would um you know, condolences to him and his fan, family. Um, Cody Stamen looked really good. Like, round three, yep, unanimous, unanimous decision. Like, total strikes, 113 versus only 64, Brian Kelleher. Uh, significant strikes, 89 to 57, right? Favoring Cody Stamen as well. Takedowns, he got two takedowns versus one. Yeah, just really looked great. Um, as we know, Kelleher is like, you know, has a lot of power in his hands, but he does, uh, yeah, I, I just thought that Cody Stamen, I thought, he would just have better, you know, be able to mix it up well. He has a lot of output, good cardio, and good wrestling as well. So I thought, yeah, I, I it's kind of this fight kind of went down as I thought it would. But he, uh, Cody Stamen looked even better than I thought. I think, you know, going through such difficulties, I mean, just shows the mental the mental fortitude of this man. Man, he's just really tough, mentally tough, and um, you know, good wrestlers usually are. Uh, so but yeah, he looked great. You know, just uh, landing at will, and um, the wrestling was there for him, of course. And he just, I, I mean, just complete dominance. So good on him. Yeah. And, Let's go on to the next one, my friends. This one, uh, this one here, though I did, I picked incorrectly, but I'm not even surprised by it. Ian Hain, Hainish versus uh, Gerald Mearshart. I did lean towards Mearshart, and he was underdog, but I didn't even bet it. I thought, you know what, I think he's gonna win. I'm leaning towards him, but and he's underdog. He's plus money, so. But I said, no, nah, I'm not gonna bet it. You know why? And look at that, because Mearshart is like a very inconsistent. He's good. He has good boxing. I mean, he primarily just you know, lands the hands. Has good range. He likes to step on the lead leg, lean back. I brought as I said before, lean back out of the way of his opponent's punches, and then come forward to kind of do a one-two, almost like a Nate Diaz style, kind of. I mean, there's some similarities as far as uh, give, using your reach in that way. But Ian Heinrich, you can't, you know, he's a tough guy. He looks really good. Look at that, round one. I didn't think he looked this good, though. Dang, Gerald Mershark, this is why I don't, I didn't bet on him. He's just very inconsistent, kind of trades wins for losses. Uh, round one, three minutes, 46 seconds in, K-O-T-K-O, man, he looked good. I mean, Gerald Mershark just whoosh, went to his back. And that's one thing I did see, like, Gerald Mershark, he's kind of happy to get, once he see, gets some adversity on the feet, he's kind of happy to go into his guard, gets dropped, but, um, man, look at that, knockdowns, one, total strikes, I mean, like, Mershark only landed, I'm sorry, significant strikes, oh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, total strikes, yes, let's go in order here, Gerald Mershark only landed three compared to Ian Heinish's 22, and significant strikes, 20 of those 22 were significant for uh, Ian Heinish. And, uh, yeah, all, I mean, only three strikes, of course. I hope they're uh, significant for Jill Mershark. But, yeah, I mean, Heinrich looked really good in there, man. I'm not even surprised. You know, hats off to him. Um, like I said, my pick, I was leaning towards Mershark, but I even said, yeah, don't bet. It's just, it's a tough one. I mean, you can't, someone that's inconsistent like that, it's just tough to bet on, man. So, uh, going up next, uh, oh, speaking of things I'm glad I didn't bet on, <laughs> Alex Caceres. Jeez, yeah, look at that. Alex Caceres versus Chase Hooper. Man, I was leaning. <sighs> Who did I pick? You know, I was going back. I was on the fence with this one, and I, I did. I think I did lean towards Hooper, but I didn't. Bet, I didn't bet it. I was like, you know what? He's he's a huge favorite. It was ridiculous, and people are like, "I'll oh, go for him. He's gonna get submitted." And I thought Alex Caceres. The thing, what I didn't like was that, and he looked really good though. Alex Caceres. And then obviously, it's, it's like this is this matchup was a complete striker versus grappler, right? I mean, to the just almost purely, purely so. I mean, Chase Hooper really needs work on his stand up. I mean, that's no joke. We all know that, but. He's tough, but and Alex, Alex Caceres, though, the reason I didn't really uh, put money on him even though I was an underdog is because he does get submitted, and I thought, you know what? And I didn't put money on Chase Hooper because I thought he's so green, and uh, Alex is a vet of the sport and his striking, and I thought, you know, this is just, this is just, I don't know, this is tough. I'm not going to bet this. You know, Alex Caceres, because I thought, what if he, I thought he'd look really good on the feet, you know, landing some flashy stuff, but never land anything that to really hurt him. I thought maybe he gets overzealous, maybe starts to slow down later on, and I thought Chase Hooper would eventually maybe get him down and kind of, ca you know, capitalize on on the mistake of Caceres, you know. Not that he's some kind of crazy phantom, but I just thought if you know you're really good at grappling and you know that's all you're going to go do to someone, you can get, you'll eat, and he's eating shots too, he'll walk into it. I thought like Alex Caceres, like I said, if Alex Caceres had shown in the past, I would have bet him if in the past he had shown great improvements in his takedown defense, you know, maybe a little more pop in the shots, maybe, you know, like, I felt like, gosh, man, I, I mean, compared, like, people like Zabit or your, your 
Yair Rodriguez, you know, he has that flashy Taekwondo style too, but he has a little more pop in, in his shots. And he has the BJJ to kind of uh, back it up. Like he can, he's more uh, well-rounded. He has, and, uh, but Caceres looked really good just toning with him. Yeah, look at that round three, you know, his decision. Like just kept popping off shots. I liked it. You know, he ate a couple of himself. But look, I mean, look at that toe strikes. 109 versus 60 for Chase Hooper. And significant strikes, 103 of those strikes. I mean, they're almost all, almost every single strike was significant. 103 significant strikes versus only 53 Chase Hooper. So, you know, Chase Hooper, like I said, he would land back and Anxiety you know, would get hit sometimes. But, I mean, look at the difference. I mean, every time you hit me, I'm going to hit you, like, twice, you know, at least, right? So, uh, yeah, takedowns one, two. Like, I mean, yeah, it was actually interesting. He did get a takedown in there. I remember that. I was like, oh, look at that. He just felt really confident, just showing him, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. You can't even submit me when we're on the ground. He just, yeah, really good uh, performance, Caceres. I, I hope he does. He's a vet, so I really do hope he, uh, yeah, he comes in like that, you know, with a really good game plan, sticks to it, be consistent. Good stuff. Uh, going on, we're finding the main card here. So, yep. Yeah. Now, these, yeah, I mean, of course, I bet this one's an easy pick up. I mean, Sean O'Malley, what a crazy uh, favorite, man. Crazy favorite. You know, round one, three minutes, six seconds in the TK KO. Man, um, yeah, look at that. And Eddie Wineland, man, geez, I mean, he's a, you know, hard hitter and all that, but I thought the way he landed, though, I mean, I know he always fights like that. I was like, damn, I'm surprised. People were telling me, like, dude, that's how he fights. That's how Eddie Wineland fights. He always has his hands down. I'm like, yeah, but I, it looks so bad how. I mean, I thought maybe he'd turtle up sometimes, like, you know, um, John O'Malley, that, that nice, just that, that one shot, phew, KO. Uh, it, it's just, but it's weird, Eddie Wineland has his hands down, he, kind of, he sees the shot coming, he's like, oh, he just winces. He just waits for it with his hands down. It's like, that, that part surprised me a little bit. I know maybe he, he does have a tendency to do such things, but I just, it just still surprises me, man. Oh, man, yeah, total strikes, yep. John O'Malley, 13 versus Eddie Wineland, 4 for him. So, yeah, I mean, look at 13, 16 size versus four, right? I mean, look at that. Yeah, just channel might look really good. Um, so, so tall. Thank you for the division. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, another good win for him. I mean, uh, I'd like to see where Sean Malley goes. Like, we'll see how he handles, you know, once he, the, it'll be interesting to see him kind of see more of, more of, more of his game when he's going up uh, against higher competition. I think, yeah, go up, move up the rankings. And um, yeah, interesting to see what uh, Sean O'Malley does. Hopefully, you know, I, the competition gets, you know, a little more, uh, higher up, you know, as, and uh, I, I want to see him in some good, fun matches. This one too, Neil Magny versus Anthony Rocco Martin. Actually, I was leaning towards Martin, but I, I said, and I said this in the breakdown, I was talking to my brother, actually, too. I've talked to, like, and friends and stuff, and I said, with this fight, dude, Neil Magny versus Anthony Rocco Martin, I thought, you know what, uh, this is like a pick em. And I thought people were, like, saying, oh, Magny all day, which is good if you got that. That's awesome, great for you. But, um, yeah, and, and Anthony Rocco Martin was plus money. I didn't bet it, though. Like, I just thought... This is a pick of my thought because Rocco Martin has really good uh, kicks and his, his jiu-jitsu looks nice. You know, he has good, a lot of subs. Does only has like one KO on his record, so he's not like a really... But I thought out of the two, I think Rocco Martin just throws with a little bit more bad intent, a little more bad intentions, if you want to put it that way. He just kind of, he really kind of, you know, leans to a shallow more. But Neil Magdy really impressed me. When he fought against the Leech, man, um, when he fought against Lee, he just like, he looked great. I mean, just, you know, great ground and pound, great strikes against the fence, even using a shoulder and, uh, you know, Good, just really good, man. Even takedowns as well. But I thought I'd see that a little more. This one, but though, but yeah, I knew the tendency with two guys like this, their style, they're not going to KO you. It's going to be, you know, almost like kind of some shadow boxing, look in the mirror. But it was it was an entertaining fight going back and forth. You don't know what's going to happen. Like, who's going to be landing more? You know, I thought, who's who's going to edge out? I thought we'd see a back and forth and then get a, uh, uh, some kind of decision, right? Which, of course, we all know that, right? Should have bound that going to decision. I mean, that's kind of like almost a given, unless Anthony Rocco Martin um, subbed him or perhaps, you know, Neil Magny just kind of, you know, TKO'd. I'm sorry, not TKO, but like kind of, yeah, well, almost TKO just kind of landed enough ground and pound to stop, for the rest to stop it. Uh, that's the only way it could get finished, I thought. But um, yeah, no, Nick, Neil Magny looked good. It was a close decision, though, I'll be honest. And I thought, Neil Magny, to be quite frank with you, I thought, I mean, good job on him. I thought I, I thought he would look a little a little better. I mean, maybe it just, I think when you have two guys that are similar, um, similar height, I mean, a reach advantage for Mag Magny. But uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, reach advantage and a slight height advantage. But um, uh, I just felt like maybe he'd be able to use it more, maybe a little more output. I think well, when you have a guy similar to you, maybe kind of in, in some way similar style. I mean, they are quite different, but I thought on the feet, they kind of be okay, leg kicking each other a little bit, you know, trying to jab, pop the jab a bit. I just thought like maybe Neil Magnet could against a fence and maybe kind of land a little bit more shots, maybe kind of grind him out a little bit. Um, but yeah, really interesting, close fight back to back. Not surprised no Magni got it. Thought he would have looked a little better actually, but this one, oh, I I got this one wrong too, man. What a crazy card! This is like the one, I think the worst as far as my picks, is like the worst card. 
but I knew it. I was very, I, I knew, going in, I told everyone, like, just to pick them. It was like, people are sleeping on a lot of these fights. Um, Corey Sandhanger versus Aljamain Sterling. A lot of people were saying Aljamain, and I wanted to pick him. It's just that, um, you know, his wrestling's really good, you know, and his striking's getting wild, but I thought Corey Sandhanger looked pretty good, too. I mean, he gets in danger, and I thought, even when he's about to, like, his arm looks like he's gonna snap, he won't, he won't tap. He never taps, and, like, pretty much, almost, right? Like, you know what I mean? Let me know he did here, right? <laughs> I mean, look at round one, three minutes, 32 seconds in. Submission, look at that. Really great stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, Corey Sandhagen, man, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, people are, people are now, of course, I lost people are saying, like, oh, he's just a knockoff Diamond Cruz wannabe, whatever. Like, no, I mean, I think Kanye Sanhagen is still a good guy. It's going to be a learning experience for him. But, yeah, Aljamain Sterling looked great, man. I mean, I think we could see this guy be the, like, people saying, like, maybe when it's on, we see on Fight Fight Island, when that starts going, we might see Aljamain Sterling be, like, become the Bantamweight champ or something, man. Uh, he looked really great, man. And I, I just, the only thing that concerned me, like I said, going through the tape, I just can't ignore it. It's my opinion, you know. I mean, but looking back, I just didn't like a lot of times, like, like even when going against the sun, so sometimes like the striking, he is very wild, and, and and I like that he does. He will land like a swimming back fist and stuff, even like a spinning back kick. Um, he's wild. He, he kind of he likes to jab the shot out there, but his hands are off and down, chin is out, and when he lands, he kind of stays extended a little, just a little bit too long. You know, I feel like he can get countered that way. So I thought, damn, maybe story story. Uh, Corey Sandhagen would have a little success countering, as he is a, a tall, lanky guy, um, and you know, in the in his uh, striking looking good. But I, I think, yeah, let's not sleep on Corey Sanhagen. I think he'll improve, he'll learn from this. But yeah, great job for Al Jermaine. And that's why I didn't bet it. I, th- I thought, nah. I, this is, I thought, by the way, now people, the people that did, you know, great job to you. The ones that bet on Corey Sanhagen, you know, good luck next time. The ones like me that didn't bet, it's good. I guess we didn't bet. But um, yeah, just a really great performance. Like, yeah, really looking forward to this bandwagon division. I tell you what, is, 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 I mean, it, it's been one of my favorite for a while now. Just so many exciting fighters in there, man. Speaking of which, geez, Louise, here we go. Yep, I called Cody Garbrandt getting it. I know everyone was saying no. And of course, I was like, I'm biased because I am a fan of his. But, um, you know, I like his style, really fun. And I, I've, been, I've been a fan of his for a while. Like, watching him coming up, I was like, damn, this is... He's kind of one of the guys that was getting me into the bantamweight division more in the UFC. You know, like, oh, like, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to the bantamweight more now. Um, but, uh, yeah, Cody Garbrandt looked, I mean, phenomenal. Just look at round two. My God, man, with like one second left. You see that? Yep. So I think I've, all this time I've been saying, like, I've been calling it wrong on the time. My bad. But anyway, uh, yeah, like, it was like one second in the round. Round two. It was great. I, I, just right before the buzzer, just beep. I mean, the, the it looked great. He actually, I mean, I saw I saw him. Uh, it, looked, it looked really good. Because when I thought about this fight, I thought, actually, there's two ways. I thought he would get a, a KO. He would KO Asanso. Or I actually thought he could get uh, a decision. I thought maybe he would... Um, kind of minus P's and Q's, be the one to, like, have the faster combos. Maybe more, I guess, significant moments in the fight. Almost like a Dominic Cruz. I mean, not, maybe not dominate to that degree or showboat as much, but I thought it was great. Man, the low kicks were there all first round. It was great. This was, I was so happy watching this. I was like, you know what? He's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's not getting in a brawl. He landed. The low kicks were swift. And people are saying, oh, like, and the thing is, Cody Garbrandt dodges leg kicks really well, too. He'll kick, get out of the way. He eats some, but he, he also, he also, uh, um, sorry, he'll time it, jump out of the way, which is nice. It, it will frustrate your opponent and also makes them expend energy. It kind of gets them off balance as well, because when they whiff their kick and it's hitting air, you know, they're going to, um, they're almost like halfway turned around. So you can kind of capitalize on that. But um, yeah, Cody Garbrandt looked really great. I like that he mixed it up, kind of showboating a little bit, trying to get egg Asanso on, trying to bait him. And he said that in the interviews as well. He was going to try to take him to deep waters, kind of bring it out of him, make make him bring the fight to him, you know? Um, and yeah, did it, I mean, awesome. Uh, very good. Mark Henry did it. it was, I was like that Mark Henry was in the corner as well, helping coach him. And it was really good. Uh, yeah, just frustrating him. The whole time I was like, I was happy. Even some people might be like, oh, let's do something. Like, no. No, I don't. I'm I'm happy that Cody's doing this. This is not just play it safe, but he's setting it up, dude. Look, he even did like one where he faked, like he was gonna do a little takedown. Like he's changed levels and then did a little a quick spin into a, a leg kick. Really sweet stuff. And in the end, like when we all know, you go, you'll see the replays. I'm sure all over social media, like Instagram is on there. You know when he was being a Sanso. So when Sanso tried to land a a a, a leg kick. I'm sorry, a leg kick. A body. A kick to the body. You know, Cody did grab it and, and to you know uh, upset uh, a Sanso. He kind of let it go. He's like kind of, you know, toying with him, duck, duck down to bait him and totally got out of the way. His eyes, what I liked, you see, and I think GC pointed this out too, even though he didn't really highlight it well. Um, I was like looking at it when I saw him, his eyes were open the whole time looking. Cody was aiming for a sense of chance. He's looking for it. And just that, that really great, really great eye, really great um, 
he's got the eye, you know, and he's got that speed and that ability to do it. Like it's trained, it, it finds a target really quickly. And as Joe said, you know, I don't think there's a man faster, you know, in the, in the MMA, like he just, I, he did a really great job. And like I said, if I said, if he minds his P's and Q's on paper, he should get it. It's just about it, what kind of sh- guy shows up. I just, man, I, I mean, that clean of a KO, my goodness, like Sean O'Malley did a good clean up, KO, but it's like, it's like, oh, I got the, you know, the best KO of the night, right? But then Cody Armour's like, hold my beard, just go and do that. Great stuff. Asanso, you know, is a great vet, and I knew he's a, it was a great test for anyone in the division, so it really says a lot about that. And uh, yeah, really look, really happy and really looking forward to uh, Cody showing his skills and, and mining his P's and Q's and really get, get, putting out uh, great great highlights like that. But anyway, let's go on. Sorry, I talk too much about that. Amanda News versus Felicia Spencer. Good stuff, man. Um, oh, man. I mean, I picked, I picked Amanda News. Of course, one of the greatest favorites. There was a guy in Vegas. What? Like some guy just bet 100, I'm um, sorry, a million dollars straight. Just a million dollars straight on Nunes, which is like, good Lord. That's crazy. I mean, of course, it's like, it's like free money. It's guaranteed money, basically, right? But, um, but geez, Louise, man. I mean, I just, oh, man. I guess if you have a million dollars, you know, some guys, man. I don't know. <laughs> That's cool stuff, but yeah, good for that guy, right? Um, but Felicia Spencer, I mean, this all kind of went the way we thought. However, one thing, though, Felicia Spencer ate the shots. I knew she would be tough, and uh, yeah, I feel like maybe, you know, Amanda News was kind of having fun. She was grinning, smiling at her, like like every round, smiling, yeah, like, yeah. Can I teed off, like, one, two, that right. And if you're watching the fight, I called, I was like, dude, that right is there for her all day. Like, she kept, she toyed with her, kind of like, pop, and land that right chat, and she smile. And Spencer, I'm sorry, Nemanja News would smile. If she landed. She's kind of having fun there. Almost you want to say toying with her a bit, but, um, yeah, she knew. She's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep landing this. Like, you know, I'm gonna keep landing on you. I'm gonna keep going. Look at that. I mean, total strikes 132 versus 70 for Spencer. Uh, significant, significant strikes. Almost all of them. 124 of them, right? And uh, for Nunes, and then 42 for Spencer. Uh, Spencer, man, you know what? A submission attempt one. And passes, yeah, Amanda had five passes. Uh, Spencer, you know, I, I mean, because the thing is, she has that karate background. And I know her striking's always been, like, kind of lackluster. She does, she kind of eats shots, walks into them, and will kind of swing. I was just, I was, like, saying, if you're down on the cards as much, you're literally, you're just eating shots. She has a hematoma on her forehead. You know, she's got, she's bloodied up. She was getting a little bloodied up. Well, she had, like, a little cut up below her eye, I think. A little bruise on, on the first round, I believe. But, yeah, that right hand, I mean, and she had, she had blood coming. She got, like, a little cut on the hairline, near the hairline, or past the hairline. And, um... Uh, yeah, I thought, man, and it's the same side. I'm like, damn, it kept getting bloodied up. I'm like, she's hitting you the same side, your left side of your face, because the right hand is there for all day. Like, cover up. Like, dude, I mean, pop a jab, anything. You're already eating shots anyway. I, I was, I'm going to be honest with you. Why didn't she just go for broke? Like, when you're eating the shots, swaying out there. Like, almost like, do like, Derek Lewis style, swaying and banging out there. Like, you know, she should be the heavier girl. Try to close the distance. I just, I mean, she's going to lose it anyway. I, I just thought that Spencer would look a little bit better, actually. I mean, the, I mean but look, Amanda News, I mean, she's like... The difference in their striking ability is so was so evident, and uh, but I'm just surprised. I knew Felicia would kind of would get beat up a lot. I know she'd lose it, but I just thought she'd she'd at least try. I mean, I don't want to say take anything away from Spencer, but I'm sorry, take anything away from Nunez and her performance. But I thought I was kind of hoping, like, dang, like I even had a little money on like Amanda Nunes in a parlay, but I don't even care. Like, if she, you know what I mean, I was like, I just want to see. I want to see more of a, a fight. Like, I want to see. Uh, Spencer kind of go in there and try to make it at least try a little more. I mean, I don't want to put it in a bad way, but just go for broke, for lack of a better term, okay? Just just swing out there, man. You know, you land something. I mean, she cut up Cyborg, for God's sakes, right? You could have landed something on news, but news at the end of the fight, I mean, took very little of any damage. Like, just looked fine, looked completely fine. Just looked like she got done with a workout, you know? Um, so, yeah, congrats, you know, congrats to her. I don't know who can do it. I mean, Megan Anderson's calling out, but geez, Louise... Mingus Anderson, if you don't have the good boxing to hang with Nunes, you gotta have something. You have to have something like a great grappling game. You gotta you have to have some kind of really high level to your game. You can't just be kind of good everywhere, you know. Or, or you know, and Spencer has great ground game, but it just hasn't. You have to make it translate to the MMA, right? You have to kind of mix up your skills. I don't know. I mean, yeah, really good stuff. She's like the goat of women's MMA. So, congrats and a uh, really fun card. Uh, I'll be breaking down. I'm just gonna do re- my research for this weekend's card, and uh, yeah. Good luck to your bets if you're betting. If not, enjoy the fights anyway, and peace out, guys.